What's good, guys? This is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. In this video, we're going to have a blast. No long introduction. We're just going to go out and shoot old lens, vintage lens with a modern camera. We have the Nikon 180mm 2.8 AF lens. We're going to pair it up with the Nikon Z9. You heard that right. We're going to use the FTZ adapter. Now, the 180mm is world-renowned Nikon lens. I did a review on the 180mm some time ago. I'll put the link above. Check that out. This lens is a gem. And today, in this video, we're going to have some fun. I know it's not going to autofocus. We'll manually focus this lens. But we're going to have a good time. So without any further talking, let's go. Let's have some fun. Let's shoot some photos, videos with the Nikon Z9 and the 180 millimeter 2.8 Nikon lens. Amazing lens from yesteryear. We're coupling a vintage older gem with the ultra modern modern flagship Nikon Z9. And we're going to just see how it performs. Let's go rock and roll. I load all the images in Lightroom. This is where I'll be displaying and making some adjustments for you guys. The lens info is on the top left corner with my settings. In case you're wondering what you're looking at, that's called Yerba Mate. In Montevideo, Uruguay, South America, where my mom's side of the family's from, it's a popular herbal tea drink. It's actually pretty good. This would be my first time mounting this lens to the Z9 with the adapter. Right off the bat, I'm enjoying the results. Here I'm wide open at 2.8, still sharp. Look at the background blur, it's amazing. I bought this lens because of the bokeh. It's just something special, it has a lot of character. Now let's go 3.5, make some adjustments here. Let me zoom in here and let you see the detail. This, uh, you know, Yerva Mate holder is made of leather. It's a leather wrap, so just look at the detail this lens can capture. But at the same time, sharpness is not everything for me. It's the character of the lens, the colors. This is all window light coming in from the right at ISO 1000, actually, sorry, 1600 ISO. And of course, I'm using the Nikon Z9, so 1600 ISO, no problem. The files are super, super clean. Look at the background blur. I am in love with the character of this lens. Again, no AF, no problem. And, uh, you know, this being an older lens, it suffers a little of CA, chromatic aberration. That's to be expected. This is before all the coatings and all that technology on the lenses. Super easy fix. Just use the defringe slider in Lightroom and it takes care of some of that issue. Let me slide it back so you see what a good job Lightroom does to this issue right here. The 180 millimeter 2.8 lens, this is the AFN version, which stands for newer. The AF version is a plastic body. This is an all metal body. It's the N version. After the N version comes the AFD version. This lens was produced in the late 80s, and I just love the results here. And I believe all three versions of this lens have the exact same optical quality. I might be mistaken but I like my lens. I'm making some adjustments here in Lightroom and you can really get creative with 
these images and the Z9, like I said, look at that. You can make this thing look like a modern day Picasso, right? So the autofocus issue, okay. It's an AF, it's an older lens from the 80s, right? No AF, no problem. This lens is really fun to, to manually focus on a Nikon Z9 with the FTZ adapter. I don't mind it at all. If I'm gonna get results like this, look at that, it looks like a painting almost. The bokeh, the character, it's just contrasty, it's rich, it's, <laughs> I love it. I love these results and this is why I wanted to make this video so you could just see what kind of dimension you get from using these older quality lenses. And this is one of my favorite older lenses from Nikon, by the way. You guys were wondering about ISO 64 on my last Z9 video with the 400? Well, ISO 64, right here, looks great. The Z9 produces an amazing RAW file, so the possibilities are endless. The Z9 captures some exceptional video. Coupled with the 180, this lens and camera combination delivers professional results. This is why this lens is such a cult classic among Nikon shooters. I loved using this lens with a DSLR and I love it even more using it on a mirrorless camera, especially the Z9. Not that it performs better or worse, it's just more fun to use with the LCD or the viewfinder, you know, pulling focus, no problem. Let's talk about why I bought this lens, the character and the background blur. Look at the quality you get with the bokeh here. It resembles and it reminds me of the Nikon 200 F2. People call this lens the poor man 200 F2. Let me zoom in here. Look at the sharpness of that leaf. You can see every little detail captured. Yeah, this is a 45 megapixel sensor, but the lens has a lot to do with it as well. Here's some sharpness examples, shooting it at harsh light. Now, I mentioned the 200 F2. Not only is it considered like a poor man's 200 F2, but let's talk about size and weight. It's nothing like the 200 F2. That 200 millimeter weighs a ton and it's huge. This lens is smaller and lighter than a 24 to 70 2.8. Now you can forget about VR and all that good stuff that modern lenses have, but on a Nikon Z9, the beauty of that camera, this camera has IBIS. It works amazingly well when taking stills and when you're doing video hand holding the 180, it stabilizes the image pretty well. I've always believed that sharpness isn't the end all be all when it comes to lenses. The 180 millimeter 2.8 Nikon is proving me right because, well, it is sharp, but it has a lot of character. Let's take this camera inside and take some natural light shots right here at ISO 640. We're gonna zoom into this Volkswagen. Who likes Volkswagens? I've always been a big fan of the Beetle or the Bug. Awesome car, they don't make them like that anymore, do they? <laughs> Just like this lens, they don't make them like this anymore. Guys, remember, again, this is a lens way before the G lenses and obviously the Z lenses, but we're talking about decades old little glass here. Okay, let's back up and see the whole frame here. Let's make some adjustments. 
so you can see the differences if I make some exposure adjustments let's try some color temperature you guys prefer a cooler image indoors like a shot like this or do you prefer you know warmer images <laughs> I prefer that shot in that cognac back there <laughs> I'm just kidding The spider web. <laughs> yep, it's a challenge focusing, but when you nail it, you nail it. Look at the out of focus areas on the edges of that spider web. Again, background blur like no other for the price. And let's talk about price. They're all over the place on the used market right now, you know, as low as $250 and as high as six seven hundred dollars depending on the version and it depending on the condition given that this is an older lens the condition is all over the map as well look at the colors z9 kicks major major you know what if you guys noticed the video clips in between the Lightroom sample images of the 180 millimeter. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of not only these images, but the video clips. This image stuck with me. I think this is probably one of my favorite images I captured this day with this lens. Just love the dimension. Pay attention to the foreground. Look at the background, the color rendition. The sharpness of these little twigs, branches, smooth, buttery bokeh. Again, you only see this with like lenses that are like a lot of money. Corner sharpness ain't bad as well, huh? What do you guys think? Leave me a comment down below. The 180 millimeter focal range is an interesting one. Great for portraits, maybe some sports, you know, hey, landscape, images like this, environmental. I mean, you have a 7200 and you're wondering, should you get something like this? It's definitely a good option as a backup or a just for fun option. And what I mean by that is you already have your 7200s, you already have your 85, you already have a 200 millimeter or whatnot. You already have the portrait lens or you already have Z lenses, right? And you want to get something just to, for the love of photography. Sure, get something like this. Or you can get this and use it for your professional work. Look at the color rendition. Just stunning. A closer look at the 180 millimeter to eight old glass with new body video. This lens has a built in hood, all metal body. It doesn't weigh that much. It feels really nice in the hand when using it with a Nikon Z9. Here's a closer look, the built in retractable hood. Again, you can use the Z9 dials to adjust the aperture, but you cannot autofocus, which to me, I love manual focusing sometimes. So let's rock and roll. Hey guys, so what did you guys think? Leave me a comment down below. 
I like the size factor of the 180 millimeter coupled with the Nikon Z9. It really feels good in my hand and uh, I can't wait to use it more often. <laughs> Ultra older Nikon gem of a lens, the 182.8 AF lens with the aperture dial here with the Nikon Z9. Again, yeah, this is not a focus, but oh well, I had a blast. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next video, guys. This is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. Don't worry about it. Go out there and shoot your shots. And rock and roll. Hey, what's good, guys? Vahagen here from Vahography. If you like more rocking videos like this one, go ahead and check the videos on the screen and subscribe to this channel, Vahography. Rock and roll.